Yuna Kugisaki is the only girl in Jujutsu School's freshman class in Tokyo and is basically the superhero we didn't know we needed. Minus the cliche skin tight suit or the impractical bikini armor. Seriously, she is truly redefining the role of a female protagonist in shonen manga. But you have to understand, what's really cool about Nobara is how she wears her strength like her favorite accessory, unapologetically and without compromise. It's as if she's saying, They don't know me, son! This makes Nobuda's character a breath of fresh air in a genre where women often have to choose between being the damsel or the warrior. She's both, with a sprinkle of sass and a whole lot of courage. So, in the world of shonen manga, where the guys usually get all the cool powers and epic battles, Nobuda waltzes in and reminds us what it means to be a strong female character. And thank god she's gearing up instead of dressing up. No less. So, for today, let's dive into exactly what makes her so amazing. One, independent and strong-willed. Now, Nobuda Kugisaki isn't just your average hammer-swinging, nail-launching sorceress, but the epitome of marching to the beat of her own drum. Her leap from a tiny village to the neon lights of Tokyo in episode 3 wasn't just a mere craving for the city life, it was her personal rebellion against the stick to your lane village mentality. Now, it is quite clear that our girl Nobara isn't one to follow the crowd. In season 2, we were introduced to Nobara's childhood friend, Fumi, where she traded backpacks with her to stop others from bullying Fumi. While every other kid in the village went for the classic red or black, Nobara knowing this still opted for the light blue one and didn't care about what anyone else thought. Yeah, this does show us her strong sense of individualism, but there's more to her longing for independence. In the same episode, we are also presented with the story of Saudi. Now, Nobuda idolized Saudi, but the villagers ostracized her. Yet, Saudi became good friends with Nobara and Fumi, but the villagers' hate drove Saudi's family out, which disgusted Nobara and was the primary reason for her leaving to Tokyo, as well as getting into a fight with her grandmother, hoping to see her friend. This nosy nature that the village had became a total buzzkill for Nobara. Take the red bean rice incident as an example, where Fumi was brought red bean rice to celebrate her womanhood by a neighbor. This made her uncomfortable and helped her understand why Nobara didn't like it in the small town. Now, most people in Nobara's place would have just mingled in with the crowd, but not our Nobara. And when she did finally decide to head to Tokyo, defying her grandma's wishes, it wasn't just a change of scenery for her. It was about chasing a life where she's the boss of her own destiny. So, if you merge her sense of independence and strong will in battle, Nobara's as fierce as they come. Whether she's taking on a cursed spirit or getting impaled, she doesn't just stand her ground, she owns it. This gal is not giving up or giving in. Take the fight against Esso and Kichizu. Nobara wickedly activated her straw doll technique, Resonance, by stabbing her infected arm with a nail, thus inflicting decay back on the brothers and delivering searing pain to both parties. Unfazed by the pain herself, Nobara continued to drive nails through her arm not once, but three times to sway her opponents. I mean, this game of chicken truly showed off how terrifying her will and commitment really are. Two, direct and assertive communication. But one thing is for sure, Nobara is literally the embodiment of confidence and self-assurance. The moment she steps into a room, her presence is undeniable. She's this unique mix of pride in both her appearance and her combat skills, giving off an aura that says, I'm better. I am better! And this sort of attitude is sometimes a little too intimidating. When you first encounter Nobara, her intensity is immediately apparent. Think back to when she first met Yuji and Megumi. She didn't hesitate to assert her superiority, leaving a lasting impression. This assertiveness isn't just about making a statement, it reflects a deeper understanding of herself and others, a trait often associated with high emotional intelligence in modern psychology. Assertive communicators like Nobara are not only in tune with their own emotions, but are also adept at managing them. They possess a sensitivity towards the emotions of others, enabling them to handle conversations with tact, even in the most challenging situations. However, Nobara might come across as brash or arrogant, but as you get to know her, you realize there's much more to her. She's not just a fighter, her personality is multifaceted, like layers of an onion, each revealing something more interesting than the last. Initially, Nobara's tough exterior masks a deeply caring and dedicated soul. She's not one to openly display 
display her emotions, but her assertive actions reveal her true nature. Beneath the surface, she's the type of person who would go to great lengths for her friends, embodying the notion of tough love. There are moments in the series where Yuji and Megumi, despite their good intentions, find themselves indecisive, and that's when Nobara shines. She doesn't wait for others to take charge. She steps up, makes decisions, and leads with style and conviction. Her actions are not just about taking the lead, they're about showing that she's as capable, if not more, than her male counterparts. 3. Practical and Realistic and let's talk about how she handles chaos. Nobara is a fascinating example of someone who always goes for a pragmatic and realistic approach to chaos and challenging situations. Her practicality is not just limited to day-to-day -day scenarios, but is deeply integrated into her combat style as a jujitsu sorcerer. Unlike her peers, Yuji and Megumi, who occasionally lose their composure, Nobara is remarkably calm and composed, even in the midst of turmoil. She's like the eye of the storm, maintaining her cool and right irrespective of the complexity or intensity of the situation. This inherent keep calm and carry on mechanism within her is truly impressive. In full-blown battles, Nobara consistently demonstrates her ability to stay level-headed and in control. This proves that she's not just a passive participant in her journey, but is actively steering the course of events. Her approach aligns with psychological principles, particularly focusing on pragmatism. Nobara's mindset is centered on the here and now, dealing with immediate challenges practically rather than getting bogged down by the past or overwhelmed by concerns about the future. This pragmatic approach is clearly evident in how she handles the aftermath of battles. A prime example of this is when she and Yuji were successful in defeating and killing the two brothers they were up against. While Yuji was enveloped in guilt over the deaths, Nobara's reaction was markedly different. She was relatively unfazed by the incident, acknowledging that killing was an inherent part of their role as jujitsu sorcerers. Her way of comforting Yuji by framing their actions as part of their duty further illustrates her practical and present focus mindset. Now, Nobara's attitude can be connected to the principles of Rational Emotive Behavior Therapy, REBT for short, which is a form of cognitive behavioral therapy. REBT stresses the importance of accepting reality, however unpleasant or challenging it may be. By accepting that killing is a part of her role and not letting it overwhelm her, Nobara demonstrates a strong acceptance of the harsh realities of her position as a jiu-jitsu sorcerer. This acceptance is crucial for her to function effectively and maintain her mental well-being without being paralyzed by guilt or moral dilemmas just like Yuji. 4. Passionate and Driven Alright, let's move towards passion. And Nobara has a lot! The only thing this woman wants is to fiercely protect people from curses. She is the kind of person who dives headfirst into the chaos, all for the sake of duty. But it's not just about swinging her hammer and nails. There is a method to her madness, deeply rooted in modern psychology. Let's break it down. In the world of psychology, we talk about autonomy, competence, and relatedness. Now, Nobara is a walking, talking embodiment of these principles. Take autonomy, for instance. This is a sorcerer who doesn't just think outside the box, she practically lives there. When she was nearly defeated by Haruta Shigemo, it wasn't just a bruise on her body, but a dent in her pride. And let's not forget how Kento Nanami, in all his wisdom, tried to bench her. But Nobara? Oh, she's not one for sitting on the sidelines, especially not with her friends in the thick of it. Disregarding orders might not be textbook sorcery, but hey, it's Nobara style. Now, on to competence. This is someone who looks at a near defeat not as a setback, but as a wake-up call. After her fight with Haruta, you can clearly see a fire in her eyes, a burning desire to up her game. It's not just about swinging her cursed tools with more gusto, it's about honing her skills, refining her strategy. And let's face it, when she faced Mahito's double, it wasn't just another day at the office. For Nobara, it was a chance to prove her mettle, to show that she's more than just talk. But Nobara's story isn't just about autonomy and competence, it's about relatedness too. This is someone who feels a deep connection to her allies, leaving the battlefield while her friends are still fighting? That's a no-go for Nobara. It's this sense of camaraderie, this unspoken bond, that keeps her rooted in the fight no matter how tough it gets. But more on that later. 
Five, fashionable and confident. Okay, so throughout the anime, Nobuta was renowned for her pride in appearance and fashion sense, and she stood as a vibrant addition to the main cast of the series. With an average height of 160 centimeters and a slim figure, her confidence shines not just in her abilities, but also in her self-image, contributing significantly to the diverse personalities within the story. A striking aspect of Nobuta's character is her approach to fashion, especially evident in how she handles her uniform. Upon arriving in Tokyo, she doesn't just wear the standard Jujutsu High uniform, she adds her own charm to it. In episode 3, she also notices a man scouting out models and angrily requests to be interviewed. Now, just look at the level of confidence. This isn't merely a fashion statement, it's a bold declaration of her confidence. Nobuta stands out by refusing to conform to a standard look, symbolizing her non-conformist attitude. This is a perfect illustration of the self-expression theory, which posits that individuals use fashion as a means to express their identity and inner selves. In Nobuta's case, her unique uniform customization and chic casual wear become extensions of her personality, independence, and non-conformist spirit. Her casual wear, featured in various episodes, often includes trendy pieces that reflect her fashionable nature. Nobuta's ability to effortlessly switch from battle mode to a casual, chic look, all while maintaining her confidence, speaks volumes about her character. She isn't just battling curses. She She's doing it with undeniable style. A particularly telling moment occurs in episode 6 during Nobuta's interaction with Maki Zenin. In this scene, Nobuta not only expresses admiration for Maki's strength, but also conveys her own aspirations to be strong and independent. This conversation transcends a mere discussion of battle skills. It's an exchange of mutual respect for each other's strength and style. It further reinforces Nobuta's self-assuredness in her abilities and her self-image, cementing her as a character who is as confident as she is stylish. 6. Comedic up till now, we have talked about all of the things that make Nobuta a gal who knows how to be confident and intimidate the hell out of others. But there is also another side of Nobuta very few truly recognize. Along with all that makes her amazing, she also has a vibrant sense of humor, often brightening the atmosphere of the series with her witty banter and amusing interactions. This is especially evident in her relationship with Yuji, who is also another class clown among the first years. Together, they form a duo that frequently seeks to amuse themselves by teaching teasing their more serious counterpart, Megumi. Their antics not only provide comic relief, but also highlight the lighter side of their personalities amidst the darker themes of the series. One memorable instance of Nobuta's humor is during a shopping scene with Yuji. Here, Nobuta's passion for fashion comes to the forefront as she excitedly hops from store to store. Her reactions, ranging from enthusiastic to delightfully over the top, are complemented by Yuji's more stupid responses. This creates a charming and humorous dynamic that adds a touch of levity to the episode. Huh? You drop even one of those bags, and I'll kill you! <laughs> now, Nobuta's interactions with Megumi Fushiguro further showcase her playful nature. She often engages in lighthearted teasing with Megumi, whose stoic and serious demeanor forms a perfect contrast to her sassiness. This classic comedic contrast is most apparent when she teams up with Yuji to poke fun at Megumi, often to his mild irritation. But hey, beyond just providing entertainment, Nobuta's humor serves a deeper purpose in the series. It acts as a tool for social bonding, particularly within her group, sharing laughter and jokes fosters a sense of camaraderie and mutual understanding, essential in their team-based adventures. This aspect of humor as a unifying force is crucial in the high-stakes world they navigate. Oh, and interestingly, Nobuta's humor extends into the more bizarre and supernatural elements of the Jujutsu world. Her ability to inject sarcasm and a certain nonchalance into otherwise alarming situations adds a unique flavor to the series as well. Even in the heat of battle, Nobuta's sense of humor shines through. She occasionally mocks her opponents or makes light of dangerous situations, displaying not just her bravery, but also a different kind of battle tactic. This approach doesn't just entertain, it also demonstrates her confidence and dominance, asserting control in a way that's uniquely hers. 7. Friendship and Camaraderie Initially, Nobra was this stern character. 
Yes, but she did end up forming strong bonds with her friends and allies at the Tokyo Metropolitan Curse Technical College. From the onset, particularly during her first mission to exercise the curse spirits alongside Itadori, she suggests splitting up to handle the mission efficiently, showcasing her proactive and independent nature. When Itadori expresses concern over the potential danger, Nobuto responds by smacking him and retorts, I don't want to hear it from someone who last week was a clueless normie. This interaction is a perfect perfect example of Nobuta's personality. She's admirable in her strength and determination, but she's not the nicest person on the block. Her tough exterior and occasional harshness are part of what makes her a formidable character. For Itadori, a novice in the world of jujitsu sorcery, her hard-ass attitude likely serves as a necessary push, helping him to adapt to the dangerous and challenging life of a sorcerer. Her attitude towards Itadori, especially in the early stages of their relationship, can be understood as tough love. This approach, being stern or harsh for the benefit of someone else, can be an effective motivational tool. In their world, Nobuta's behavior likely helps Itadori quickly come to terms with the realities of being a jujitsu sorcerer. Now adding to this, Nobuta's sense of loyalty and protection extends beyond just her teammates. She has always been there for her friends, a trait we saw in how she stood up for Fumi as a child against bullies. Her altruism, which means to have selfless concern for the well well-being of others is a constant theme in her actions. This was most evident during the Shibuya incident where she defies Nanami's orders, driven by the knowledge that her comrades are in battle. And Nobuta's decision to fight Mahito's clone despite the risks highlights her bravery and dedication. In the heat of battle with Mahito's double, Nobuta acknowledges her limited accomplishments on October 31st but remains undeterred. She believes defeating him would be a significant contribution. And because of this confidence, confidence in her strategy and her ability to injure Mahito's soul forces him to retreat. However, her pursuit and attempt to exercise the curse also reveal a hint of overconfidence, which ultimately leads to her downfall. This itself proves her actions are driven by empathy and the desire to protect her friends, and to embody the essence of altruism in psychology. 8. No Tolerance for Injustice Now you might have noticed, Nobuta HATES INJUSTICE! This strong stance against wrongdoing is not just a superficial trait, but is deeply rooted in her background and personal experiences. Growing up in a rural village, she frequently encountered narrow-minded attitudes and restrictive societal norms, which she found suffocating. An early testament to her sense of justice was her defense of her friend Saudi. Standing up for Saudi was more than just an act of friendship. It was a clear indication of Nobuta's inherent belief in fighting against un fair treatment and societal prejudices. This belief is further explained in her interactions during the Goodwill event, particularly with Momo Nishimiya and Mai Zenin. When Momo insulted Yuji, attempting to justify Mai's behavior, Nobuta was visibly annoyed. Her dislike for Mai stems not just from personal grievance, but from a deeper disdain for those who use their difficult backgrounds as an excuse for their actions. Nobuta's confrontation with Momo highlighted this viewpoint. She dismissed Momo's gender-based defense of Mai's attitude, reflecting her belief that people should not be excused for their negative behavior simply because they come from challenging circumstances. This is in contrast to characters like Saudi and Maki, who, despite their difficult environments, maintain their integrity. This aspect of Nobuta's character aligns with something psychologists refer to as the cognitive attribution theory, which delves into how individuals explain their own and others' behaviors. Nobuta tends to attribute Mai's behavior to her personal choices rather than external factors, such as the discrimination within the Zenin family. This highlights a bias towards seeing things in terms of personal traits and responsibility rather than blaming circumstances, putting the focus squarely on individual accountability instead of convenient excuses. Psychological research also supports this perspective, suggesting that while adversity can undoubtedly shape individuals, it shouldn't be a blanket excuse for negative behavior. Nobuda's viewpoint underscores the importance of resilience and personal growth in overcoming challenges. She believes in the inherent worth of individuals and the necessity of treating everyone with respect and fairness, irrespective of their background or circumstances. This philosophy often puts her at odds with the more traditional and rigid views in the jiu-jitsu world, making her a uniquely compelling character because her actions and attitudes towards injustice are not mere reactions to external events. They are integral parts of her character shaped by her experience 
experiences and her unshakable belief in justice and fairness. 9. Unique Combat Style Nobuda also possesses a combat style that is both unique and highly adaptive. Her approach to battle is characterized by the use of a distinctive set of tools, including a metal hammer with a heart design, metal nails, and a straw doll. Now, at the core of Nobuda's entire arsenal is her hammer, which serves multiple purposes. Primarily, it's used to launch her metal nails, which are constantly imbued with her cursed energy. This imbuing process is not just for sure, Show. It allows her to levitate the nails, making them easier to handle and deadlier as projectiles. The hammer is not just for ranged attacks though. In close combat, it becomes a formidable weapon, and it's essential for activating her resonance technique, a powerful ability that creates a connection between a straw doll effigy and her target. Nobuda's nails are also a key component of her combat style. They are versatile, acting as the medium through which she channels her cursed energy. The nails, once launched, can be used in various curse techniques, including her signature move, the hairpin technique. This particular technique causes the nails to explode with a surge of cursed energy, creating a damaging burst around the target. In addition to this, she also strategically uses a straw doll, which is another aspect of her innate technique, the straw doll technique. This allows her to share damage between the doll and her target, an ability that's both cunning and effective in battle. But it doesn't end here. The thing that sets her apart is the fact that Nobuda's combat style is not just about the tools she uses. It's also about her immense reserves of cursed energy. She has demonstrated an exceptional ability to manipulate this energy, using it to enhance her attacks and techniques. After experiencing the Black Flash, her understanding and control over her cursed energy have increased significantly pushing her abilities to new heights. So, if you merge this with another notable aspect of Nobuda's fighting style, which is her adaptability, you get one hell of a warrior. She has this gift where she can swiftly adjust her tactics to suit the situation, making her an unpredictable and formidable opponent. For instance, Nobuda seamlessly switched from using her standard hammer to a rubber mallet when facing human opponents. This quick thinking allowed her to neutralize her foes without causing fatal harm, showcasing her versatility and big brain IQ. 10 Personal Ambitions Finally, let's talk about personal ambitions and Nobuda's dreams of living life on her own terms, breaking free from societal constraints and expectations. Her journey is not just about seeing the dazzling life of Tokyo, but it's deeply rooted in her desire for self-expression, especially in a society that often imposes restrictive norms onto women. Nobuda's move to Tokyo to join Jujutsu High symbolizes her defiance against these limitations and her determination to forge her own path. At first glance, Nobuda might come across as someone who's all about the glitz and glamour of city life, aspiring to be a model, indulging in fashion, and soaking up the best of Tokyo's tourist spots. However, this surface level impression is quickly shattered when you witness her in action. Take episode 3, for instance, where Nobuda's true character shines through when she's faced with a choice. Maintain her tactical advantage against a curse, holding a little boy hostage, or risk everything to save the child. Despite her initial thoughts about the foolishness of dropping her weapons, her heart and instincts guide her to let the curse escape, hoping to save the boy. This moment encapsulates Nobuda's depth which proves her life isn't just about luxury and personal ambitions, it's also about protecting others. This duality in Nobuda's character is further highlighted when, after saving the boy, she casually remarks that joining Jujutsu school was her ticket to Tokyo. Yuji, astonished, asks her if she'd really risk her life for that, and Nobuda's response is a resounding affirmation of her commitment to stay true to herself. She's honest about her feelings, even suggesting that she wouldn't be happy if things had turned out differently, and she earnestly thanks Yuji for his help. But Nobuda is more than her ambitions for freedom and self-expression. She's a fierce competitor, constantly honing her skills as a Jujutsu sorcerer. Her drive to prove her strength and capabilities is not for recognition, but for self-affirmation, to demonstrate her worth on her own terms. While she may not explicitly state it, her actions always reflect a deep commitment to her friends and allies, hinting at an underlying ambition to stand by and protect those she cares about. 
And there you have it guys, everything you need to know about the sassy warrior who calls herself Nobara. We hope you enjoyed this in-depth dive into the making and personality of Nobara Kukisaki. Make sure to leave a like and tell us which character you'd like us to do next. And do subscribe with the notifications bell turned on. I'll see you in the next one. Peace!